This is Mark Bell from SuperTraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. we got a lot of stuff to get to tonight, and I want to thank Ed the Islander for getting the question right. The question was, the last cliffhanger question was, uh, how should your, uh, it was to fill in a blank, your uh, last rep should look like your what in a set. Your last rep should look like a what. And the answer is, is what I always say, your last rep should look like your first meaning that you're practicing perfect form and that you're practicing perfectly. And if you do that, then you'll be perfect in the game. And, uh, you know, you got to think about like Mr. Perfect. Remember Mr. Perfect? He hit a hole-in-one every time he played golf. He uh, got a perfect score every time he bowled. He could throw the football, uh, you know, 100 yards of the length of the field, and then he could catch it himself for a touchdown. So <laughs> practice perfectly. Anyway... Uh, we got some stuff to get to, and welcome to the Big Bench series that we're starting. I want to thank Brandon Brainer for setting a PR for having the largest face in the history of the Power Project, which I thought <laughs> I thought that I would have that record for a while. Jesse Burdick has been coming close sometimes, where I just look at the video and I go, "Good Lord, he's getting close," and then I always blow him away. I carb up. He doesn't stand a chance. But Brandon Brainer, he killed both of us at the same time. It was like wasn't even a challenge for him. He just came in and just swallowed us both up. Well, we got a question to get to for the Big Bench Series tonight. And it's a question. The guy says that his cousin, which I like that. I like that. Your cousin. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Nudge, nudge. Yep. It's your cousin. Okay. Okay, cousin. <laughs> uh, we'll pretend that it's your cousin that has this problem. <clears throat> he says that his cousin's. Uh, arms are flaring out when he does a bench press. Does a pretty good job of keep, keeping him tucked as he travels downward, but he loses the tightness in the bottom. And uh, as he's coming up towards lockout, his uh, elbows are flaring. We got a couple issues to address here. One is you may be overcoaching him. I know you hate to hear that, but you may be overcoaching him. You may be asking him to tuck his elbows too much during a bench press. And... Um, you need to, as a coach, you need to realize that each individual is so different. Arm lengths are so different. The differences between men and women. The differences between a large lifter and a smaller lifter. The difference between a tall lifter and a shorter lifter. The differences are great. The variations are endless. They are endless. The amount of different shit that you can see in a given lift is endless. The variations can go on infinitely and you have to keep that in mind as a coach there's a lot of give and take if you're telling him to tuck his elbows and he's having a hard time first of all if he's a skinny individual I do not think that he needs to really bother with tucking his elbows a whole lot anyway telling a large lifter a power lifter a bodybuilder somebody he's been lifting for a long time as I did with Stan Efforting I told him to tuck his elbows and bam he got a PR it's because Stan Efferding's lats are bigger than that tree over there. So, having said that, if you're dealing with a smaller individual, which I imagine your cousin is, uh, he's probably fairly thin. Work on getting that son of a bitch thicker. Give him a cheeseburger. Got habits, uh, habit burger right in the background here. Have that son of a bitch eat a cheeseburger. Get himself a little thicker. Have him work on his lats. Bring up those lats. Bring up those triceps. And... Uh, also, uh, have them work on benching a little bit lower as an assistance movement off of some boards or some sort of partial range of motion work. He could do it in a rack or something and where he's, he's bringing the weights down a little bit lower than normal. So maybe he likes to bench up in here more, take him down in here more. It's just an assistance movement. The amount of weight that he uses uh, is, um, is not irrelevant completely, but have him do sets of 10 that way, sets of 8, sets of 6. Have him work on close grip bench pressing. Have them work on close grip board pressing. Uh, have them work off a two board, three board, four board. All that stuff, all that heavy overload stuff with the elbow slightly inward and him bringing those weights down in the right spot should help him keep his elbows inward. Again, if he's a skinnier individual, he's going to end up being in the what? He's going to end up being in the what? Oh, you got it right over there. I heard you. The gay pterodactyl position. And that is not something that we want. Also, watch out for gay wrist. He could be a candidate for gay wrist. 
you got to really watch out for that. Everyone, everyone loves to do gay wrists, and don't let them do gay wrists. Remember Lamar in Revenge of the Nerds? They built that special javelin for him. It was all bendy and everything to, to, to accentuate the uh, limp-wristed throwing style. You may need a limp-wristed bench press. You may need a limp-wristed uh, bench bar. Maybe that will be my next invention for all you guys out there with gay wrists. Let's not have gay wrists. Let's get rid of it. Squeeze that damn barbell. If you have problems with your, um, with your wrist, if you have the weight and it's in your fingertips like this, that is gay wrist. You're guilty. You're 100% guilty and you won't admit it. If you have gay wrist, address it. Hit up some grip work. Hit up some forearm work. Get up the old school forearm deal with the rope. Let's do it. You know, Let's get rid of this thing. I'm tired of seeing this limp-wristed lifting style. But that will wreak havoc on your shoulders, and that will wreak havoc on your lifting. So make sure you're not doing that. One quick way to eliminate that is to squeeze that barbell. Now, as far as coaching him, make sure that you're coaching him properly. Make sure that you're not over-coaching him. Make sure he's not over-tucking the elbows and being in the gay pterodactyl position. His elbows just need to be in this range here. They don't need to be up, and they don't need to be way down by his side either. Some... Body, some power lifters can lift down in there. Some bodybuilders can lift up here. We got a range. Of, we got a range there. But with him, if he's having trouble, the more that you force him to overdo it, the worse off he's going to be. The more that you try to force someone to get their hips lower when their hips pop up in the deadlift, the worse off they're going to be. Just say fuck it. Lift with your hips higher. Just start with your hips higher. And just have them lift that way. As long as they can, as long as they're not table topping, as long as their hips are lower than their shoulders, they're all good. As long as this dude, your cousin, is in no danger of hurting himself, allow him to keep rolling with the punches and make sure the elbows aren't out too much. You said he pushes over his face. Some people push the weight up over their face. I push the weight up over my face a little bit myself. Um, just keep having them working on it. Hammer those lats, hammer those triceps. And uh, on the way down, he should be trying to bend the bar. On the way down, he should be trying to bend the bar. See how the elbow automatically tucked? You see that? Make sure he's doing his dumbbell presses this way. We've talked about all this before. Right? <laughs> Make sure he's holding his dumbbells this way. Okay, why? Because Mark Bell said so. And that's the right way to do your dumbbell bench pressing. Hold it that way. It'll teach you to keep that uh, elbow locked in, okay? So bring that shit down. On the way down the bench press, before you descend, bend the bar. Bring the weights down. Gather strength as you're bringing those weights down. As Ryan Canelli once told me, the greatest bench presser of all time. Gather, gather, gather. Explode. And when you explode, you're going to spread the bar apart. You hear some people say to flare the elbows. Sometimes that could be a little bit of a dangerous cue uh, because you don't want to overdo it with flaring the elbows because you don't want the shoulder to be forward. Okay? You want that shoulder to be back and locked in. Okay? So it's bend the bar on the way down and spread the bar on the way up. Bend the bar on the way down, spread the bar on the way up. All right, I guess that uh, pretty much concludes what we have for today. And we have another cliffhanger. Who was the first person and the only person? Well, I believe the only person. Let's just stick with first. Who was the first person to beat Andre the Giant? And in what event was it? Who was the first person to beat Andre the Giant? And what event was it? I know you guys know the answer. Don't even try to pretend that you don't, that you don't watch wrestling. And that is it from supertraining.tv. And that is it from the Big Bench Series. I'm out.